The three holiest sites in Christianity are the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem, and the site where Christ was baptized. The Bible tells us that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, a river that just from the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea flows for over 140 kilometers. So where exactly was Christ baptized? Baptism symbolizes the initiation of a person's spiritual journey. There is an interest in finding the site where Christ was baptized because the site marked the beginning of Christ's ministry. In fact, some would argue that it was the birthplace of Christianity. Our first clue comes from John 1.28. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where John is baptizing. Going back to the Old Testament, Bethabara is said to be the site where the Israelites crossed the river Jordan into the Promised Land under the command of Joshua before proceeding to Jericho. The Madaba mosaic map depicts Bethabara, the place of St. John's baptizing, on the west bank near the Dead Sea and close to Jericho. There are two other Bible verses that emphasize that John was baptizing on the east bank. The sites associated with Jesus, like Bethlehem, Nazareth, and Jerusalem, are all on the west bank of the Jordan River. The Bible's emphasis on crossing the river would have to mean that John was baptizing on the east bank, what is now the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. Using these verses and the accounts of pilgrims who visited the site over the years, archaeologists think they may have found the site in Jordan. Did you know? Apart from Joshua and the Israelites crossing the Jordan River and the baptism of Jesus Christ, this area on the east bank of the Jordan River is also the location where Prophet Elijah is said to have ascended to heaven in a whirlwind. Al-Maktas means baptism or immersion in Arabic. And at Al-Maktas, Jordan, Archaeologists think they may have found the site where Christ was baptized. No less than five churches were constructed on the spot. The pilgrims who visited the site wrote about what they saw. The first account from 530 AD comes from a pilgrim named Theodosius who wrote, Five miles north of the Dead Sea, in a place where the Lord was baptized, there is a single pillar, and on the pillar an iron cross has been fastened. There too is the church of St. John the Baptist, which the Emperor Anastasius built. The church is very lofty, being built over large chambers on account of the Jordan when it overflows. The iron pillar has been lost to time, but here are the remains of the base of the pillars that once raised the floor of the church to protect it from flooding. Forty years later, in 570 AD, Antoninus of Piacenza visited the site and said, By the side of the Jordan, where the Lord was baptized, at the place where the water returned to its bed, marble steps descend into the water. One century later, in 670 AD, Arculfus of France gave us a detailed account of what he saw. At the edge of the river is a small square church, built as is said on the spot where the garments of the Lord were taken care of at the time he was baptized. This is raised so as to be uninhabitable on four stone walls, standing above the waters which flow below. This mosaic gives an artist's impression of what the site might have looked like based on the pilgrims' accounts. The area was much closer to the banks of the river and the steps led into what looked like a cruciform baptismal site. There is one thing that's required for baptism but is missing. Water.
Theodosius, a pilgrim from 530 AD, recorded in his account that the Jordan River was known to overflow. That is a far cry from what we see today. Various earthquakes have hit the area and over the years have caused the Jordan River to change its course. This change to the river was recorded by pilgrim Abbot Daniel who visited the site sometime between 1106 and 1107 AD. He says, The place where Christ was baptized is distant from the river Jordan as far as a man can throw a small stone. There is a little chapel with an altar. This marks the place where John the Forerunner baptized our Lord Jesus Christ. The Jordan River is also a major source of water for both Jordan and Israel. In 1964, Israel's national water carrier diverted water from the Sea of Galilee to the coastal regions of Israel. This greatly reduced the flow and the quality of the Jordan River and have caused tensions amongst the nations that depended on the river for water. This is also said to be one of the factors contributing to the 1967 Six-Day War. Visitors who visit the site want to get baptized on the same spot as Jesus did. But sadly, that is not possible as the site contains fragile archaeological remains that have to be preserved. From a traditional point of view, the Bible states that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and pilgrims can do just that. In fact, they do it in the same order as the archaeological evidence discovered. They first visit the chapel, prepare themselves, walk down the steps down to the Jordan River to be baptized. This is the new Greek Orthodox Church of St. John the Baptist. The church is decorated with paintings depicting St. John the Baptist, his ministry, the baptism of Jesus and the ascent of Prophet Elijah into heaven on a fiery chariot in the whirlwind. The new site has all the provisions for pilgrims wanting to get baptized. So if this is truly the site where Jesus was baptized, why was it lost? And more interestingly, why are there two other baptism sites on the West Bank? Did you know the disputed territory of West Bank we hear about in the news gets its name because it's literally the West Bank of the Jordan River? In Jordan, archaeologists think they have found the authentic site where Jesus was baptized. But why are there two other baptism sites on the West Bank? During the Byzantine period, pilgrims who visited the site were protected. Various earthquakes, river floodings, the invasion by the Neo-Persian Sassanian Empire in 614 AD and the penetration of Islam led to the fading and the eventual abandonment of the sites on the East Bank. By 670 AD, the commemoration of the baptism site took place on the West Bank in what is now known as Qasr al-Yahud or the Castle of the Jews. During the Six-Day War, due to the military action near the Jordan River, the Israeli Ministry of Tourism constructed an alternate baptism site, Yadinet, located south of the Sea of Galilee. Only in 1994, after the Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty was signed, excavations began on the East Bank, leading to the eventual discovery of al maqdas By 2002, the site was opened to public, and in 2015, UNESCO declared al maqdas a World Heritage Site. 
In 2011, the West Bank opened a renovated Qasr al Yahud. Many Christian sects build churches at Al Maqdas. Christians from all over the world congregate annually to commemorate Epiphany. Al Maqdas is preserved as a national park and attracts visitors from all over the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comment section below or by simply hitting that thumbs up button. If you think so, do share this video with your friends. And hey, if you enjoy documentaries in general, do consider subscribing. Here are my social media handles. I will also place the links in the description box below. Until my next video, keep seeking because the truth will set you free.